the four most common skin infections in combat sports. Unfortunately, infections are part of life. They certainly pop up in the world of combat sports. It is a topic that is often overlooked, but can influence the outcomes of fights and has changed careers and lives. It is very important to understand infections and to not take them lightly. This video will give a little intro to microbes and then talk about the four most common skin infections in combat sports. Lastly, I talk a little bit about antimicrobial resistance. This topic may be unpleasant, but it is important to understand how you can treat these infections, but really, most importantly, how you can prevent them. Microbes, microorganisms, fall into bacteria, fungi, and viruses. Bacteria are an example of single-celled organisms that likely represent the initial life on this planet. Fungi are made up of multiple cells that can actually get quite large. Fungi include molds, yeast, and mushrooms. Lastly, there are viruses. There's debate about whether we can even consider viruses as living things. They're essentially little packages of genetic material that hijack and take over cells like a parasite. These microbes are everywhere. Billions, trillions, just in and on our own body. This is termed our microbiome. They live all around us, on us, and in us. The interactions between humans and microbes range from mutually beneficial, like bacteria in our gut, to all-out war against each other. There has always been a constant battle for survival, going back to the primordial stew that made up the beginning of life on this planet. Microbes battled. This war for survival pushed these creatures to evolve. It was to become larger or faster or stronger. It also involved chemical warfare. Microbes learned to make toxins and other microbes made counters to those toxins. The continual arms race between organisms persists. However, recently, us innovative humans have tilted the scale way over to our side. We learned how to harness and control some of these weapons. In 1928, Dr. Alexander Fleming observed that mold could make a substance that could kill bacteria. By 1941, purified injectable penicillin was available on a large scale. Before our recent scientific gains against microbes, it's estimated that about 30% of human deaths were due to infectious diseases. For some context, just do a little reading about the horrible conditions that soldiers had to face before the modern antibiotic era. Most casualties during war were from infectious disease. The microbes that often cause skin infections and are often seen in the world of combat sports are staph, strep, ringworm, and mat herpes. I will talk about the symptoms and treatment of each. As always, seek out immediate medical attention if there is any concern for an infection. Let's get to the big four. First, there is staph. This is short for Staphylococcus aureus. This bacterium can often be found on our skin or our nasal passageways. Problems arise when it gets into places it should not be, like deep to our skin. This bacterium damages local tissues, but also can produce a toxin that can make us very sick. It invades through the skin, but also can invade deeper, even getting into the bone, which is a disaster. It can spread through skin-to-skin -skin contact or contact with contaminated surfaces. Staph will often show up as a painful red bump. It can also look like an inflamed pimple or even a large boil. Some people can feel sick in addition to the locally angry infected tissue. You may have seen the acronym MRSA, M-R-S-A. This stands for Methicillin Resistant Staph aureus. MRSA is a form of staph that has evolved resistance to some antibiotics that would usually treat it and now is very commonly seen. Treatment for staph involves prescription antibiotics. This can be done by mouth, but if it is bad, then IV antibiotics may be necessary. If antibiotics are not working, then surgery is necessary. This situation can arise because the antibiotics cannot reach the bacteria, because they're walled up inside of an abscess, also known as a, a ball of pus, or if the infection is spreading too fast. Surgery involves cutting out the bacteria and the dead tissues. Next there is strep. Strep is short for streptococcus, and there are several types of strep bacteria that can cause infections. Strep lives on our skin and in our mouths, among other places. You probably have heard of strep throat, which is what it sounds like, an infection of your throat 
with strep. Again, if the bacteria gets to places it should not be, then bad things can happen. Strep also has toxins that can make your whole body sick. Like staph, it spreads through skin-to-skin -skin contact or via contaminated surfaces. Strep will also be red and painful. There can be blisters that form, and sometimes it has a honey-crusted appearance. When kids get these infections, it is called impetigo. Strep is also treated with prescription antibiotics by mouth or by IV, depending on how severe it is. Surgery is also sometimes necessary to cut out the bacteria and tissue issues that have died from the infection. Then there is ringworm, also known as Tinea corporis. It is not a worm, but a fungus named, generally speaking, dermatophytes that eat a protein called keratin in our skin. As it spreads out, it creates a ring, giving it its misleading name. It is highly contagious through direct skin-to-skin -skin contact, and it is a similar type of infection as athlete's foot or jock itch. Ringworm has the classic appearance of a circular, reddish, and itchy rash with a clearing in the middle. It does not kill the tissues. It is treated with antifungal medications that usually can be put onto the skin, but sometimes oral medications may be necessary. There are reports of increasing antimicrobial resistance in dermatophytes that cause ringworm. Lastly, we have mat herpes. This has also been called herpes gladiatorum, but it is also just simple old herpes simplex virus or cold sores. This viral infection is very common and will result in a rash that can be painful or tingly and looks like a series of small blisters. At times, people can have a fever or headache or swollen lymph nodes. This virus can then lay dormant inside of nerves and then can reactivate when you are physically or mentally stressed. It is spread by direct skin-to-skin -skin contact. It is highly contagious. Treatment may not be necessary, but includes antiviral oral medications, which require a prescription. These medications can be used as a way of making an outbreak go away faster or to prevent recurrence. Unfortunately, with herpes simplex virus, there is no cure and it can come back. Prevention. This is the big one. You likely noticed a theme with all of these infections and how they are spread, but here's some good rules. One, if you have a break in your skin, cuts, scrapes, cover them up or do not train. If you recently got a tattoo, take some time off. Two, if you have something that looks like an infection, do not get on the mats. Either through skin-to-skin -skin contact or contaminating the equipment, you are increasing the amount of infectious microbes that are around. And there are some horrible stories of gym pandemics. Three, clean and dry the mats and equipment after use. It is everyone's responsibility. Four, you should shower as soon as possible after training. Soap and water are all you need. There's no secret formulas necessary. Five, you can prevent getting cuts and scrapes to you and your training partners by cutting your nails, covering the Velcro on your straps, and wearing other protective equipment to cover your skin. Personally, I wear a spats rash guard combo for this reason. And six, if prescribed medications, use those medications as instructed. We need to understand that the battle with infections will never go away. The arms race continues. Microbes will continue to evolve. They will grow resistant to antibiotics as a way of surviving. This is a problem around the world. MRSA is only one example of bacteria growing resistant to treatment and become more dangerous. There are other microbes that are growing stronger too. It is going to take a concerted effort by scientists, doctors, and their patients to use antibiotics properly. Even then, the microbes may catch up. It will be up to us humans to continually innovate and discover new treatments to stay ahead in the arms race. Even then, sometimes new microbes come about that we have to scramble to catch up to. So there it is, an intro to microbes and the four most common ones in combat sports. Prevention is key and it is everyone's responsibility to keep their training areas clean safe, and keep winning against the microbes. I'm Dr. Lucius Pomerantz, orthopedic surgeon, in the game, training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, and if you like these videos, please like, share, get notifications, subscribe, all that stuff. Thank you.